My guest is Pastor Greg Whitsett, who is the director of the Center for East Asian Religions, a global mission center. Greg, thanks for joining us. Sure. Now, the Center for East Asian Religions, uh, this is one of many global mission centers. What is the role of this, of CEAR? Well, basically, we want to help the church be more effective in how we love uh, people in Asia. So, Buddhist, Taoist, Shinto, Confucians, background people like that. Um, and they may not be actively involved as, as a religion, but they have a worldview that means that they see the world in ways that is very different than, say, Christians. And so if we want to share God's love with them and communicate what that means to us, sometimes we just pass them in our understandings and we're not really communicating. So what you're saying is you could be someone who's not actually practicing as a Buddhist, but because of your background, you are shaped by that worldview. Ex exactly. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people say, well, the people here are, have uh, Buddhism, but they have other things. They're not really pure Buddhists. And I said, well, there's no such thing. Right. Um, so we're just interested in, in helping us to be more effective with a segment of the population that have been very resistant because they are so confused by what we call good news. Right, and so there are certain things that we would take for granted as Christians, but if we say that to a Buddhist, it sounds strange or, or even offensive. Exactly. Can you give me an example? Well, there's any number, but uh, a lot of times we talk a lot about going to heaven and yeah. how that's going to be a great experience. And they want to, uh, we want to be ready for Jesus to come and, and go to heaven, and he's died to save us from our sins so we can go. And the problem with that is that they have 21 heavens. So which one are we referring to? And uh, they also know that heaven is not the ultimate solution, that nirvana is, and that's not a heaven. So they're feeling that maybe we're just enticing people to just some temporary measure, kind of like taking Tylenol for a headache, which yeah. may be cancer. So that's confusing to them. And the other thing is, is the idea of sin is a totally different concept where they, it doesn't have a personal sense of having wronged our Creator God, um, but it's very much a type of thing where it's just the condition of suffering is what, what they would call sin. So even poverty and sickness and all of those things. So you don't need to have someone die for you because of your suffering. That just sounds very crazy. Right, so the very concept of somebody dying for your sins is something that's a foreign, foreign thought to them. Yeah, it doesn't sound like good news at all. It right. sounds weird. Right. Yeah. So how, how many years have you been living in Asia now? Uh, 14. 14 years, and so you raised your kids in Laos and Thailand? That's right, yeah, and now we're empty nesting, so we're kind of sad to see them in America and us here, but, but yeah. we also know that that's the stage of life we're in. Now, for them, having spent so many years in Asia, then going back to North America, what sort of challenges does that raise? Um, well, for one, we you know don't get to see each other every day. Right. Uh, home leaves mean they need to find somebody near school who can bring them in to take care of them over the home leave because they can't fly home. Uh, to, to Asia uh, as easily. So that's one challenge. Um, I, I guess from a parent's perspective, our biggest challenge is we just have a harder time keeping our, our, our cells connected as far as knowing exactly what's going on each day. Right. But thankfully we have Skype and those things that help that. Yeah. What about cultural things? Like America is a different, very different place to Thailand and when kids have been used to an Asian environment, was it hard for them to make the shift back? Or? Yeah, I think any kid that kind of experiences life as a missionary kid and going back home experiences some adjustment. Uh, last year was my oldest son's first year back and two things he felt was a major difference. He, he said, Mom, I, so different here. And so my, my wife perked up her ears to hear what, what was so different. And he said, well, the first thing, it's really dry in America compared <laughs> to Bangkok. <laughs> I'm always having to use chapstick. <laughs> but the other issue is he just realizes that um, culture and everything is just very, very different. Um, the interests, um, he just realizes he's seen life a lot more basic, the way people are living and the challenges they have, and feels that in America, a lot of times we get too carried away with pop culture and stuff that he feels is shallow. Right. So it's just part of that, seeing the grittiness of life in living and growing up in Asia. Yeah, I'm sure. Now, your center produces many different resources. Can you describe some of the things that you've been um, producing? Well, 
We have produced several books from our conferences. We have we invite people to share papers, and we try to publish a book each year. The, the most recent one we've uh, printed was Winning Hearts, How to Win a Heart of, of an East Asian Person uh, and, and Lead Them to Christ. But right now we're also working on uh, producing glow tracks that are designed for Buddhists who have a very different perspective um, and rather than just translating ones that work for Westerners. Uh, we're also creating a Bible study series that can be used for, for working with Buddhists and other people like that. Um, that helps them to understand the story and understand some of these concepts that are hard for them. Mm. And we're also developing training, uh, a training um, certification course that will help people who are interested to kind of go through a process of basic training to know how to get started. Wonderful. Now, for any of our viewers who may be interested, they may have some neighbors from um, East Asia or they want to understand them better. Wh where can they find out more about what you're doing? Uh, the best place is cear.globalmissioncenters.org. Okay, cear.globalmissioncenters.org. That's right. Okay, plus it's on the screen, so that makes it easy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and viewers at home, what, what, what can they do to help support your ministry? Well, I think prayers are always a big part of it. But also just to follow the stories, you know, they, they can get on the website and look there and that will instruct their prayers. But um, when the annual sacrifice offering comes around, offerings go a long way to help start projects that we desperately need in many of these people groups around the world. Fantastic. Well, Greg, um, many blessings upon you and your family and your ministry and thanks for what you're doing. Thank you, Gary. And viewers at home, uh, please pray for the Global Mission Centers and pray specifically for Greg and his family and their ministry amongst the East Asian religions. And as Greg has reminded us, prayer is very important. And don't forget the annual sacrifice offering, which also helps support the work of the centers around the world.